This is my iMac G3. It is the first revision of iMac considering how it has the tray loading drive and not a slot loading drive and it is the indigo color. Even though Wikipedia says that the first generation of iMac G3s did not come in indigo, only the second ones did, this model right here begs to differ. It's running Mac OS 9.0.4 and for what it does, I guess it does pretty good. I'm not really a big Mac guy, so it does have some quirks to me. Um, other Mac users probably would beg to differ too. So first of all, we're gonna start out with the front of the iMac G3. What we have here is a 15 inch monitor, a CRT monitor that uses shadow mask. Um, it has a maximum resolution of 1024 by 768 and that resolution runs at 75 Hertz which is 75 frames per second lower resolutions like the one I'm running on I think it's 800 by 600 that one runs at 85 Hertz and 640 by 480 runs at 115 Hertz that's one thing that I the Max have gotten right the refresh rate well, at least on this model I don't know about any future IMAX the, the refresh rate is just absolutely great so what we have on the front also is the speakers and also two headphone outputs so if you have two people sitting next to each other watching a movie or something on it you can do that power button and cd rom drive it's all there including a microphone so you can talk into it and make your own silly noises if you wanted to now if we turn this 38 pound beast over to the side you'll find its io what it has is usb 1.0 um, headphone, microphone jacks, ethernet, and a modem, which is kind of, yeah, who would use a modem, but it was 1998, so whatever. <laughs> and now if we look at the back, all it has is one power plug. As you will see with this and other Macs, is there's a complete lack of modularity to any of this, so there's not really much room for expansion. Unless you get a Mac Tower, but those were way more expensive than these, and these were expensive back in the day. It also has a handle that can actually carry this heavy beast. You can actually pick it up and move it around without worrying about it falling off. And on this side, there's nothing. I use this mouse with this Macintosh, even though it does not have one button. Only one button will work. Yeah, it still works though. And the keyboard is awesome because it has USB ports on the back of it so you can plug your mouse in or whatever you want in so you don't have to have a mess of tangled, tangled cords coming out of the back of your computer. Real quickly I'm going to go into what is Shadow Mask and what is Aperture Grill. On the left is Shadow Mask. This is what the iMac uses, the iMac G3 uses, that's what's on the screen. You can see that the image is made of dots and there's a lot of black space in between those dots while the aperture grill on the right, that is what um, Sony uses in their Trinitron monitors and TVs and many other companies ripped it off. It uses, it lets, makes it so there's not as much black space in between the, the dots so the image is brighter and crisper and I'm going to show you a comparison over here of the difference. I've taken close-ups of two screens, one's on the iMac right here, and another one's on a uh, the Aperture Grill screen on my Windows 98, and you can tell there is a clear difference in the sharpness of the monitor and less blurry. I prefer the Trinitron because it gives you brighter colors, but that's a decision that Apple made, not me. So let's go into the specs of this machine. First of all is the PowerPC G3 333 MHz CPU that powers this whole thing basically. And it also has 160 MB of RAM, that's 128 plus 32. There was 32 originally in this main machine and the previous owner upgraded it. It has a Western Digital Caviar hard drive that is 6 GB and it has an ATI Rage Pro C video adapter with 6 megabytes of VRAM. All this is built in. There's like hardly any modularity at all. Maybe the CPU is in a socket, I'm not sure, but I know that the RAM is socketed, nothing else is really. One of the quirks that I really don't like about Mac OS is that the top bar is associated with every program that um, is running or whatever program is running at that specific time. Say if we open Microsoft Word and then Apple works right now, 
um, it, the top bar would change on depending which program is active at the time, and you can close the program with a little, the, a little box, but then it doesn't really close until you file and quit it. It'll just be up at the top right there, still running. It really annoys me. I only have a few games that will run on this iMac, including SimAnt, and I was actually kind of underwhelmed on how well this computer performed at SimAnt. Even at 30, 333 MHz, the CPU just does not have the draw speed that even my 200 MHz Pentium MMX does. I'll show you a sample of that here in a second. You can tell the difference clearly on the draw speed of the, the plane, but that's just SimAnt. SimCity 2000 runs pretty dang good on this, and actually better than my Pentium, I'd say. They s some people say that the SimCity 2000 was designed for the Mac and then ported to DOS and PC and whatever else system, and I'd have to say I'd go with that because it runs pretty dang good on this. So this computer was not a bad buy at $30 with the keyboard, but it was it was missing stuff it so I couldn't um, unstuff programs from the internet so that was a drawback. But I might have to get a iMac disc for that. Stay tuned for my second part where I rip the guts out of this thing, except for the monitor. I'm not touching that shit.